In this tutorial, we're going to crawl two NTLM protected sites on the SharePoint server called Sydney. The sites are on port 3001 and 3002. We'll install an onboard connector on GSA 11. Since the sites are NTLM protected and we want to have silent authentication, we'll use the SAML bridge. To keep things simple, we use connector authorization. Note that the DNS domain names for GSA 11 and Sydney are learngsa.com. However, the Windows domain name is ad.learngsa.com. So, fully qualified Windows domain URLs for content emitted from SharePoint to the connector will be sydney.ad.learngsa.com. This will be important when you go to set up the crawler. In this tutorial, we will log in to one of the SharePoint sites to see how unprompted NTLM works. Then we'll install the resource kit and the connector and run some test searches. When we run our searches, we'll want to investigate silent NTLM authentication and connector authorization so that we can perform some troubleshooting if we need to. To verify that silent NTLM authentication is working for your SharePoint users, log in to a user workstation as one of the site users, for example, student. Then open IE or Firefox and point your browser to one of the SharePoint sites, you should get logged in and you access without being prompted. To make sure NTLM authentication occurred and not Kerberos, open Live HTTP headers or similar tool. Look for the 401 authentication challenge from the SharePoint server. Here you'll note the protocols being offered. In this case, it's NTLM. Then look for the browser's response where NTLM is chosen and the NTLM token is provided. To see how Firefox was configured for silent NTLM, go to About Config, enter in the search term NTLM to find NTLM properties, and here you should find our list of trusted sites, which should include the SharePoint server Sydney. Here we'll reference Sydney's DNS name, sydney.learngsa.com, and not the Windows fully qualified domain name. Now we have the information we need to deploy the connector. To begin, you will deploy the resource kit on each web front end server containing sites to crawl and Google search boxes to embed in those sites. On the web front end server, download and install the MSI installer from code.google.com. Open the installer zip folder and run the MSI installer. Accept the terms of use. Choose whether to perform a complete or custom install. If you need only one of the two of the components, choose custom. From there, you can select components and exclude components. We're going to use the complete install because we need all three components. We need the Google services for crawling multiple sites and performing connector authorization. We need the SAML bridge for silent NTLM authentication and we need the Google search box so we can run searches from within SharePoint sites. If you're using the SAML bridge, you'll get this window. Enter the port number for the SAML bridge. This gets deployed as an IIS service on an IIS server. The installer works for a few minutes to create an IIS server and deploy the SAML bridge. We've sped things up a bit here. If you're using the Google search box for SharePoint sites, the following two windows will display. Move the installer window to the side a bit so you will see the next window that appears under the wizard. If you don't do this, you won't see anything appear and you'll think the installer is stalled. And all sites found on the server for the Google search box are listed. Select Continue to go on. Then enter your appliance host, collection, and front end for the search box to run queries. Specify whether to use SharePoint's or the appliance's front-end style sheet to display results, whether to run public or public and secure searches, and which to use by default. It's a good idea to turn on verbose logging when testing the search box. If you're using Google SharePoint services for crawling multiple sites or performing connector authorization, you'll get the following window. Enter a test site and crawler credentials to verify that the Google services can crawl sites and authorize results. Remember that the crawler uses fully qualified Windows domain name URLs emitted from SharePoint.
So this will include sydney.ade.learngsa.com. When you get green text status, click Close. If you're using the SAML bridge, enter your appliance host here so the SAML bridge knows where to return user ID requests and complete the authentication phase. After you install the resource kit, it's a good idea to test the SAML bridge to make sure you can perform NTLM authentication with the test user. To do this, go to Start, All Programs, GSA Resource Kit, and select the SAML bridge login page. In the URL address, append the word subject equals and then specify the test user's username and domain. In this case, it would be subject equals student at AD. You should get login successful. If you do, it's working. Now that we've installed the resource kit, all we need to do is configure the connector on the GSA and perform some search lookups. To do this, go to the crawl and index page and make sure the special URL caret Google connector colon is entered in the following crawl patterns. Next, go to connector administration and select connector manager zero. This is the onboard connector. If you had installed an off-box connector, you would select it here. Then select add new connector, give the connector a name like SharePoint connector, and specify its type. On this page, enter in one of the site URLs to begin crawling. Make sure that this is a fully qualified Windows domain name, like sydney.ad.learngsa.com, because these are the URLs being emitted by the SharePoint server. Specify the crawler credentials. It will be a user that can read all the content. In this case, it's going to be SharePoint admin. And then enter in all site URLs that you want to include. So we're going to use both site 3001 and 3002. We're going to use a connector for authorization, so we'll select it and deselect ACLs. And we will not specify the LDAP server for group lookups. Then look for the green light status for the connector. To configure SAML bridge authentication, go to Serving, Universal Login Mechanisms, then select the SAML tab. Specify a mechanism name, which can be anything, and the IDP entity ID, which for the SAML bridge by default is going to be SAML-bridge. Specify the login URL, which will be the host name that the SAML bridge was installed on, and the port number that you gave, which was 9090. The remaining part of the URL is going to be SAML-bridge login.aspx. The resolver URL is located in a similar location, but its server page is called resolve.aspx. If we were using ACLs, we would also have to configure the connector to perform group lookups for local SharePoint groups under the Connector tab. Now that connector configuration is complete, let's check its status on the feed that was pushed by going to Crawl and Index Feeds. Notice that we have 36 URLs that have been pushed. And to check the crawl diagnostics, we go to Status and Reports, Crawl Diagnostics, drill down on the connector, and we'll notice that the 36 URLs are there. Note that each of the doc ID URLs contains the fully qualified Windows domain name sydney.ad.learngsa.com. These were the URLs that SharePoint emitted, and there are no ACLs under each of the documents because we did not use ACLs in the connector. Now we'll run some secure searches. We'll check for silent NTLM authentication and perform some basic troubleshooting. To do this, we'll return to the user workstation where the student user logged in and use the Firefox browser that is configured to access the SharePoint server, sydney.learngsa.com, where the SAML bridge is also installed, using a trusted site. Now let's run a secure search from our search appliance that will return some content from the SharePoint server. We'll clear our HTTP header traffic and run the search. You should not be prompted at this point. If you are, something in the SAML bridge or in the browser is probably configured incorrectly. Note how long it took to get our results. It took about two seconds. This is because we're using connector authorization. If we were using ACLs, it would have been much faster. Let's view our HTTP header traffic. Since we're using the SAML bridge, the 401 challenge for authentication should return two types of authentication supported in the bridge. Negotiate, which is Kerberos, and NTLM. 
In this case, the browser is only configured to use NTLM, so that's what it returned to the SAML bridge, and that's what was used. After successfully authenticating with the search appliance through the SAML bridge, you can go to your browser's cookie cache and view the session cookie with the search appliance. Subsequent searches to the search appliance will use the session cookie rather than authenticating with the SAML bridge, and authorization can use the onboard AuthZ cache rather than sending head requests through the connector. Notice how much faster this search ran. It will be important to clear these caches between running search requests when troubleshooting, and we'll see how to do this in a minute. If a user clicks on a search result, the link will point to the Windows fully qualified domain name sydney.ad.learngsa.com, so this host may also need to be added as a trusted site in the browser to avoid getting a prompt. Things worked out pretty well for us here. Silent authentication using the SAML bridge and NTLM worked, and we got authorization to the SharePoint content. But let's double check using our logs to verify that this is exactly what happened. This will also be the basic troubleshooting steps that we would perform if we had a problem. First, we'll get access to the authentication logs by going to Serving, Universal Login, and selecting Security Manager Logs. We'll open the file. At the bottom of the file, we'll look for Status Successful. The SAML mechanism was used for authentication. The principal user ID was student, and that was a verified identity, which means that the SAML bridge was able to authenticate that user with the AD. You can get authorization log messages in the security manager, security manager log if you're using Flex authorization, but we're not. So to get the authorization logs, we go to Access Control, Authorization Log. And we'll open up the log file. For our first search request, we see that the authorizations were permitted by connector. And this is what we expect. On the second search result, we see that the authorizations were permitted by the onboard AuthZ cache that the search appliance uses to record the findings that it gets from previous searches. This is the cache that we'll need to clear between search requests if we want to do troubleshooting. To clear caches in our browser and on the GSA between search requests when troubleshooting, you need to do three things. You need to make sure that the NTLM tokens are being deleted between browser sessions. In Firefox, you have to set this parameter manually. Look for the parameter clear passwords on shutdown and set it to true. In Internet Explorer, this is automatically done for you. Next, we need to clear the GSA session cookie in the browser. The mechanism to do this is specific to your browser. In this case, we use the Web Developer plugin in Firefox. The last thing to do is clear the authorization cache on the GSA. To do this, go to Access Control and click Clear Caches. Now you're set to try and run another search with the search appliance. This concludes our tutorial for configuring the SharePoint connector on the search appliance using an onboard connector, NTLM without a prompt using the SAML bridge, and connector authorization without ACLs. For more information on configuring an offboard connector or Kerberos authentication or using ACLs during authorization, check the documentation or further training.